Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be using R to identify breakouts. So the way I have this set up is by using our price history. So the open, high, low, and close. And the way the script will run is we will insert a look back period. So for example, if we look back four days, including the bar we're trading, would we consider it a breakout in these last four days? So we can adjust the look back period in order to identify these breakouts. So let's go to our script. All right, so here are some of the packages we're going to require for the script. I'm going to be using a SQLite database to call in my data. So this will be the function for me to get open, high, low, close data for the tickers. Alternatively, you could use Yahoo Finance by running get symbols and specifying the ticker you want. But all we really need is the open, high, low, close for the ticker we are requesting. All right, so in order for us to identify the breakouts, we need three things. We are going to pass in our data, the look back days, and a Boolean of whether we want to calculate the breakout at the high or just at the close. So here I have some notes that might help you. So if this is true, it will only consider it a breakout if the stock closed at the high of the day. Otherwise, if it's false, then we would consider it a breakout if it's higher but not closing at the high of the day. So if we look into the function, as we pass in our data, we're gonna calculate the maximum price by row. So for each day, I'm gonna calculate what was the max price, and I'm gonna add that as a new column in our data frame. After we add that column, I'm gonna merge that with the closing prices, and I'm gonna use roll apply in order for us to subset our data by the look back days, and it will compare the very last instance, so the very last close, and it will return the number of times the last price or the latest price was above all other bars in this rolling period. So say our look back days are 20 and the closing price was above all other bars in this rolling period, then essentially it would return 20 if it closes at the high. Otherwise it will return 19 because it didn't close at the high. So that's why I added this Boolean, which I'll explain later on the script when we actually take a look at the breakouts. So for this roll apply, I'm just passing in the data, which is temp. So just the closing price and the max column. The width for the roll will just be the look back days. This by parameter is just the step size. So I'll use a rolling period of 20 and I'll step by one or one day. I am aligning to the right so that when this actually returns, I could just simply add it back to the data. And I do not want to calculate this by column. So I set that equal to false. And the function is what I just explained. So I'll just subset the last price or the latest price, compare it to the rest of the bars, and return how many times the last bar was above all other bars. All right, so we're gonna store that into temp. When that's done running, I'll add it back to my main data frame as n days higher. So that will be the column name. I'm gonna omit NAs by running NA omit. And this is where we use our Boolean. So if you only wanna consider the breakouts, if the stock closes at the high, then I'm just gonna extract n days higher that matches the look back days. Otherwise, I'm gonna return the cases that n days higher was equal to look back days and also when n days higher was equal to look back days minus one. So if that last bar doesn't close at the high, it'll be look back days minus one. So after we subset our breakouts, we're gonna save it into this breakout dates variable. And lastly, just return out breakout dates. So that's what this function will be doing. So let's go ahead and minimize that. Similarly, I have written a function called breakout ATH, but this is just for all time highs. So it's similar to breakout, except that I just want to extract the cases of the stock closing at the all time high. So the parameters look kind of the same. I will be passing in my data and a Boolean of whether or not I should consider the all time high based on the close or on the high column. So if we look into this function, it's a very short function. So if the Boolean is true, I will consider the all time high on the closing prices. If it's false, I will consider the all time high based on the high column. And I'm just running cumulative max and I'm gonna store that in my data frame as a new column called ATH for all time high. I'm gonna subset all the cases where the close is equal to that all time high and just return the breakout dates. All right, so I'm gonna minimize this function and we'll go to the next one. For breakout performance, I'm gonna pass in my breakout dates calculated by the functions above, and I'm gonna return the performance a week, two weeks, four weeks, and six weeks after the breakout. So I'll pass in my data and the breakouts, and if we look into this function, I'm just subsetting the index to extract the dates. I will then use the dates, and I'm gonna use L apply to give me a forward range of when that breakout occurred, which will be start, and I'm just gonna add the number of weeks. So that will subset my data for a specific range. 
I will then calculate the performance, combine it into a data frame, which I will then return as this variable called PCT. Here I'm just verifying and making sure that these columns are numeric since I'll be using these later to make comparisons. And finally, just return PCT. So I'll go ahead and minimize this function. For this get stats function, I'll just be passing in this breakout performance and I'll be calculating the geometric return if we were to trade all the breakouts, the gain to loss ratio, and the sharp ratio as well. So that will be calculated for each of the instances. So for the first week, the second week, the four weeks, and the six weeks. All right, so those are all the functions I'm gonna use. So I'll go ahead and minimize this function. So let's run through an example. I'll go ahead and run all of these functions first. So for the ticker, I'll just use SPY. I'm going to go ahead and get the data. So this is what my data looks like. Just the open, high, low, and the close. My data does start at 5-7-2001. So let's go back to our script. I'm going to calculate the breakouts by passing in my data. My look back days will be equal to 10. And I just want to consider breakouts using the close column. So I'll be setting that equal to false. So I'll go ahead and run that. So if we take a look at the breakouts. So since my look back days was equal to 10 and I'm basing this off of the close, you will see either a 10 or a nine. So if it's a 10, it closed at the high. And if it's N minus one or nine, that just means that the close price was higher than the rest of the previous bars. So here we see that we have 763 instances. And if we take a look at the latest, the latest was fairly recent. So now I'll be using this data frame to get my returns. So let's go back to our script. Let's calculate the performance. And if we take a look at the performance, so this will take every breakout and we have the breakout price and compare it to a one week out, two weeks out, four weeks out and six weeks out. So this was the performance at each of those intervals. So if we just sort these by one week, we see that the minimum was back in 2008, which returned a negative 10%, almost negative 11% for that one week after the breakout. And the highest was only 4%. So I believe the longer you hold, the wider the returns. So here we have negative 33% for the six weeks as our worst case. And the best case was close to 14%. All right, so let's go back to our script. Now I'm gonna calculate the breakouts for the all time highs. So let's run these two lines. All right, so let's take a look at the performance for the all time highs. So we don't have as many. And if we compare the one week, so the minimum was negative 8% and the maximum was relatively close to 3%. So if we take a look at the six weeks, the minimum was 33 and the maximum was closer to six. All right, so what if I wanted to use a different look back period? I would need to compare all the look back periods. So what I decided to do was to actually insert a range and apply these functions and extract the returns for each of those cases. So if we go back to our script, here we're gonna try and find the returns for different look back dates or look back periods. So my range will be from a minimum of nine all the way to 252. So I'm just gonna be inserting different look back dates to extract the breakouts. Then I'll calculate the performance, get the stats, and then return that. After that's done running, I'll rule bind all the results and format the column names. I'm not gonna be running this because this did take a while. I think it took close to 30 minutes to run. Instead of what I'll do is just call it in. So if we take a look at RETS, the first column will be the number of look back dates followed by the geometric returns. So if we were to trade each of those breakouts, what is my geometric mean or geometric return? Then we have the gain to loss ratio. And then finally, the last four are just the sharp ratios, which if we pick a random one, say sharp two, we have a minimum of negative 0.03 and a maximum of 0.06. And each one corresponds to the weekly intervals. So sharp two belongs to the two week hold period, sharp three belongs to the four week hold period and so on. So say we want to extract the details for this interval, I'll just need to pass in the look back days in our wrappers. So if we run these two lines, we can now actually see the performance in detail for this specific look back period. So here we have 804 entries and say we wanted to do the two weeks. So the minimum was negative 13 and the maximum was 10%. So I ended up doing the same for the instances that we close at the highs, except I won't actually be running these because the performances weren't that great. 
compared to the instances where we set this equal to false. So just note that if we set this equal to true, you'll have less instances of breakouts since we need to meet the criteria of closing at the high. So the last part of the script, I'm simply calculating the dollar volume for each of the tickers in my database. And I'm gonna sort that in descending order because I wanna apply these functions to various tickers. So here again, I'm just using SQLite. Day to day is simply part of the name of my database, which I'll be using to connect. I'll then pass in that connection to DB get query. And my query is the following. So I'm just selecting the symbol. And here I'm just calculating the dollar volume by multiplying the close with the volume, rounding that to one decimal place. I'm saving that as dollar vol. So that will be the column name from get symbols, which is my database name. I'm grouping by symbol and I'm going to order that by the average dollar volume in descending order. Just in case it does not return as numeric, I'm gonna set my dollar volume as numeric. So let's go ahead and run these lines. After I have imported the dollar volumes, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is in decreasing order. So I'll go ahead and run that line and we'll take a look at the dollar volume. So we have quite a few entries, but the first three are actually indices. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these three and I'm gonna take the top 50 tickers and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the functions for the breakouts. So let's go back to our script. Again, I'll be removing the indices. I'm gonna extract the top 50. So for each of the tickers, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a function. And for the function, I'll pass in the ticker. I'll get the stock data and store it into DF. I'll be applying a number of look back days for each of the tickers to get the breakouts. And if it doesn't get any errors, I'll just return the stats. So I'll go ahead and minimize this function. I'm not gonna go ahead and run this because it does take a while to run. But after this is done running, it'll save it as a list. And then I'll be using our bind list to combine all the returns together. So here I'll read it back in to see what that looks like. So let's take a look at all. So we have over 9,000 entries. Again, we have the look back days, the geometric returns, the gain to loss, and the sharp ratios. I added a new column that specifies what ticker this data is for. So here we can actually sort by sharp ratios. So let's use the first week. So the very best for the first week was actually Palantir with this sharp ratio, but we get an even higher sharp ratio if we use the two weeks. So if we go to the two weeks, we get 1.11. We see that our gain to loss was actually 81, close to 82%. And our geometric return was actually 27%. And let's take a look at the number of look back days. So if we use 19, we would actually get these returns. So let's go ahead and pass that in. So here I'll use Palantir for the ticker. My look back days was 19. I'll go ahead and get the data, calculate the breakouts, and we'll take a look at the performance. All right, so we didn't get that many observations simply because this ticker has actually been on a downtrend. But if we take a look at the two weeks, we only have two instances where it returned as a loss, giving us that 81 or 82% gain to loss ratio. And if we were to trade all of these, then our geometric return would be close to 27%. So we haven't seen any new breakouts since the beginning of the year but you can try to pass in more tickers to see what type of results you'll get and for what tickers. Or we can always actually just subset by criteria. So here I just wanna extract the two week column. I'm gonna subset my results. I want those instances that have a sharp ratio greater than 80% and also a gain to loss greater than 70%. So if we run that, take a look at that data frame. And if we take a look at what tickers, so for the tickers we get lift, and Palantir only. So for both of these tickers, we actually have pretty good returns. But as I mentioned, I would need to calculate it for more tickers so that I can get an overall picture before I can actually apply it to a live trading strategy. So what I'll try to do next is do the same but for intraday data and see what type of results we get. So I'll go ahead and post the script on my GitHub. I'll leave the link down in the description area. This concludes the video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.